here on Digital Futures, we've covered the topic of women in tech before and it proved to be a rather popular episode, sparking off a lot of comments on Twitter and LinkedIn from both men and women about all that could be done to rally more young girls and established professionals to consider STEM careers. Now, we must be mindful of this subject not feeling like a rant or intense campaign to get women into tech. Really, we just want to kick off a healthy debate. The barriers for entry are as low as they'll ever be at the moment, with quite a wide playing field, but female representation in technology remains average at best. However, there's a lot more to this than simply telling the next generation about the wonders of working in digital and tech. We've got to show what's possible by holding up real, accessible examples of others that are thriving and provide tangible opportunities. Also, working in technology doesn't mean you have to be a startup founder or hotshot CTO. There are lots of other ways to get involved. With me today to banter all of this and more are two very interesting women, Ghislaine Boddington, who is the founder of Women Shift Digital and co-curator of Future Fest 2016, and Shisa Ahmed, the founder of Helping Bee, which crowdfunds social good products. Very nice. Ladies, thanks for being on Digital Futures. Thank you. So let's get straight to the heart of the matter. Is the tech sector really as hard to crack and get into for women? as it's made out to be, and presumably, might it actually be a little more daunting for someone that hasn't come from a digital or tech background? Gillian? I think it is hard to crack, but the tech scene in particular, if you haven't had the techie coding or work with hardware background, there's a dauntingness there in itself. Um, so I think we've got to be much more open about the other parts of the jobs that are there. Absolutely. What's your take on that? By speaking to other male founders, I found that they find it equally daunting just launching a product. So I think it's all down to if you feel there's a market for the idea, just go for it. Don't worry about gender. And some of this is quite subjective, isn't it? Because some of the young girls that I mentor have had a difficult experience and have found it really hard to get into the industry. And then others like yourself and some of your friends, thankfully, haven't faced that. So I think it's quite specific to what someone comes up against. I want to add to that actually, but I do think there is a bit of a problem in us trying to put forward this issue, move three or four steps forward into a gender equality situation, when actually so many women say they've never experienced sexism. Now I, as a white woman in Britain, could say I've never experienced racism, therefore it doesn't exist. I would never ever say that, yeah. I think we need to be much more supportive, even if we personally haven't been held back, of the facts that show that there's only 7% of women starting up new job, new um, businesses, that there's only 4% of women in venture capital, etc. The facts show there's a big issue, so we all need to support it. There's a danger perhaps to women who may not have personally experienced discrimination, but constantly going, I haven't felt it, ergo it doesn't exist. Ergo, we go back two steps. Right. Now, this might be slightly controversial, but again, that's what we want to do here is push that envelope. Kilane, what might women be doing wrong here when it comes to championing other women and giving them a bit of a leg up? Because quite a few women I've spoken to also say that the discrimination they face can sometimes be from other women, elbowing them out a little bit because it's such a fierce sort of marketplace. Yes. If this is a complex area and a complex question, we do need to face it. Um, I think from little girls, we'll, we're taught to compete with each other on a very silly level, you know, more about appearance and more about how we are within groups and socially, whereas actually maybe we need to learn to be a bit more fair competitors. Um, and that when we lose, that we should actually praise, praise the others, that we actually, it's, comp it's all fair in, in competition, yeah, and move onwards. And I think also that women who are in senior positions actually have had to fight quite hard to get there through their generations. And it's very hard then to suddenly drop the kind of elbow stakeholding position that you've had to make for yourself in quite a male world um, and let the younger or middle-aged women to come up. But we definitely need to do it. What's your take? There's definitely be, been issues with the fundraising side of things. Um, so there is a boys club when it comes to venture capitalists and investors. There's not enough females in that space. So there is definitely a need for um, some kind of way to bridge that gap. 
So this one's for both of you. Now, getting involved in the tech and digital world shouldn't be limited, and I hope you'll agree with that, to being a startup founder or a CTO. What might be some of the other avenues for young women watching this episode as a way for them to get involved without necessarily taking the traditional routes and still be immersed in technology? She's a Uh, there's so many different opportunities. There's marketing, there's business development, um, there's general um, sales. Um, so there's a lot of different opportunities available for young individuals, females to get involved in. So you don't really have to be from a tech background as long as you understand the space that you're going into. Um, just bring whatever skills you have and just you know be willing to learn. That's that's the key thing. And apply that to the tech industry. Exactly. Elaine? Yes, I think there's so many different roles within those startups and, uh, and we need to have women and men in those roles. I think we need to look beyond STEM and look at STEAM, add in the A for art and design. That actually encourages girls and boys to stay within this sector um, beyond school and into university. We might not even be thinking of them as a woman in tech sort of role yeah. Yeah. because it's not a startup founder, but indeed you could be an industry analyst, a commentator, a producer yeah. <laughs> of digital futures um, and things like that and still very much be immersed in the tech industry or work for a tech company as you said but in a different capacity you don't necessarily have to be the technologist now Gilead you're heavily immersed in the digital and tech space with women shift digital and all these amazing events that you curate what sort of direct feedback are you getting from specifically young girls let's say 16 year olds who are at that very important cusp in their lives about working in STEM careers, how are they feeling about it? It's getting better, definitely. And as we can see out there, there are, like alongside Women's Shift Digital, we're, we're, we're working with so many other women in tech groups of different types. So as you probably both know, and as the, as the viewers will know, there's thousands of little groups now, all over the world actually. So what I think is important, and the young people see that, is that actually it starts to come together rather than be fragmented. Now lastly, and this is for both of you, if you could each identify one thing that you felt could massively contribute to moving the needle on the gender balance in technology, what might it be? And no pressure, Gilen. I think going back to the slightly fragmented viewpoint we have of these thousands of different advocate groups at the moment, I think we need the advocates in this sector the particularly the powerful women out there, both you know in every area, but politics, journalism, technology, to start to speak together. Inspire by doing. Shiza? No, I agree with what she's saying. And also, I think starting the conversation a lot earlier on in schools for young, young individuals, young students, that need to understand that you know technology is something for everyone. And less females will grow up to feel you know intimidated by males that way, and that this is an industry for everyone. Yeah, and I suppose if we're talking to the 14, 15, 16 year olds and showing them that they might be open to swapping home science for coding, that might actually be really helpful and quite powerful as well. Exactly. Ladies, thank you so much for having this conversation with me on Digital Futures today. It's been quite a feisty debate. That's exactly what we aim for. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks a lot.